Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. Today is our special episode. Today is our first ever exam cram. The objective of this video is to prepare you for the DP900 certification during the weekend so that you look forward to pass the certification during the coming week. This video is divided in seven parts. Each part will take you through a set of question and answer with a detailed justification for each question. Every part of this video is specifically designed with cross-references, reinforcement of concepts, links to the documentation and many more. Feel free to pause the video wherever you want. Take a break, grab a cup of coffee or tea and enjoy the session. Before we start, I just want to say please like and subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Share the video to the maximum you can and spread the knowledge. Do comment more and more, ask questions, give feedback so that everyone can benefit. Now let's begin. So let's start with our first question. Our first question is descriptive analytics tells you and then there is a drop down menu given here and from this drop down menu you have to choose one of the options so that this statement is true. So now let's see the four options given in the drop down menu. The first option is what is most likely to occur in the future. The second option is what occurred in the past. The third option is which actions you can perform to affect outcomes. The fourth one is why something occurred in the past. Now let's understand what kind of different analytics do we have before we answer this question. So the first one is descriptive, which is given here as well. The descriptive analytics tells you what is happening or the descriptive analytics also tells you about what has happened in the past then the second analytics which is diagnostic analytics tells you why something is happening so basically you are trying to diagnose something right you are trying to examine something and then that's why it says why something is happening the third is predictive analytics so predictive is what will happen in the future so predictive is more related to examining the future, thinking about what will be the outcomes in the future. The fourth type of analytics is prescriptive. So prescriptive tells you what action should we take. So basically prescriptive is like something like, uh, uh, let's say you go to a doctor and the doctor gives you a prescription, right? So what is a prescription? Prescription tells you what you need to do, which medicine uh, you need to take right so that's a that's more of a prescription so this is how you can relate prescription with prescriptive so prescriptive is basically what action uh, should you take so now you understand there are four kind of analytics descriptive diagnostic pres predictive and prescriptive and as i told you the descriptive analytics tells you more about what is happening or what occurred in the past thus the correct answer for us is yes what occurred in the past okay so now with this understanding let's move to our second question our second question is related to the batch processing before answering actually this question let's understand what kind of uh, processings do we have so first one is batch processing and the second one is real-time processing the core difference between the two is when you talk about batch processing, you're talking about when you process the data in chunks or in batches, right? Um, and when you talk about real time processing, you process the data as and when it comes. So the records are coming and you're processing them as and when they are coming, right? So that's the big difference between batch processing and parallel or real time processing. Sorry, not the parallel, but the real time processing. Okay. Now let's, with that core understanding between uh, the two batch and real time, now let's try to answer the question. So what are the options given? The options given are data is always inserted one row at a time. No, this is not related to batch processing. The data is processed in real time, definitely not. You can already see the keyword here, which says real time. Definitely it's related to the real time processing. Latency is expected. Now this looks very close to the answer. Why? 
because as I told you, batch processing is when you process the data in big chunks, right? So when you are, of course, processing the data in bigger chunks, of course, the processing will need some time. And that's why latency would be expected. The fourth option is processing can only execute serially. Now, uh, this is not the right answer because in batch processing, you can have two modes serially or parallelly. So you can choose any of those. So you don't need to depend actually on serially. So the correct option for us is latency is expected. Okay. With this, now let's move to our third question. Our third question is related to the extract, transform and load process, which is in short form is also called ETL process. I think you might have already heard if you have any time done some work with uh, extraction, building some pipelines, um, <clears throat> then you must have heard this term ETL process. So now let's look at uh, what is ETL process. So in ETL process, you basically extract data from some source, transform the data with some business logic on this, and then load the data into some data store, right? So now um, let's look at the options here, a matching schema in the data source and the target, a target data store powerful enough to transform the data, data that is fully processed before being loaded to the target data store. Or the fourth option given is that the data target to be relational database. Now, if you already know about ETL process, you would also know that in the ETL process, what we are doing is more importantly, we are transforming the data before it's getting loaded into a data store. So when you're transforming the data, which means what? You are already processing the data, you're filtering the data, you're cleansing the data before it's actually loaded into the data store. So with that understanding, I hope you can already answer the data uh, question. So the correct answer for this question is <clears throat> data is fully processed before being loaded to the target data store because we are already transforming the data. So this is very important. Always, always check out this middle keyword. Is it transform or is it the load? <clears throat> so in the next question, it's a slight variation of this same process. So this is ETL process. And in the next question four, we will look at the ELT process. So this is our question number four. Now you see there is a variation of the same question and Microsoft or in the exam, you might be asked these kind of very similar questions to confuse you, but do not get confused. Just understand the concept and you will never make a mistake. In this question, you are asked about the extract, load and transform. I already told you before that always look at the middle part. Is it a load or is it a transform? So in this process, uh, the ELT process, it's a load which is getting before transforming. So when you load the data into something, what would you need? Now you're loading a big chunk of data. You would need something powerful to process the data, right? So that's why if you will, if you think with that understanding and read the options now, a separate Transformation engine. No, we don't need that. A target data store powerful enough to transform the data or the data is fully processed before being loaded to the target schema or the target store. Or the fourth option is a data pipeline that includes transformation engine. I already told you when you are loading the data before transformation, then you need something powerful to process the data, right? So that's why our correct answer is a target data store powerful enough to transform data. Now let's move ahead to our fifth question. Our fifth question is related to the relational databases. So it says a relational database is appropriate for scenarios that involve a high volume of, and your options are, changes to the relationship relations between entities, geographically distributed rights, 
the third option is transactional rights and the fourth option is rights that have varying data structure if you have already read about relational database you probably can already guess the answer but i will take you through so the first option is changes to the relational relationship between the entities guys when we are talking about relation uh, relational databases we know that we don't want to change the relationships between the entities they are already predefined we have already you know checked the business logic and based on that we have built the relationships between the entities and then we don't want to change them so definitely this is not an answer then geographically distributed rights though definitely not it's very difficult to actually geographically distribute the relational database it's it's actually very fit for the non-relational database so definitely this is not the answer transactional rights now this looks interesting why because most of the relation data databases are actually fit for OLTP, right? You know this word OLTP, OLTP, which means what? Online transactional processing. Now you can already relate it with this with this third option, OLTP. So we are already talking about transaction. So OLTP are suited for relational database. So thus this looks to be the answer. But let's look at the fourth option as well. The fourth option says rights that have varying data structure definitely not this is a big no why because when we are talking about relation database we always set the data structure well in advance they are well thoughtful uh, they are well planned and the relationships between them are already well set we don't change them during the course of processing so definitely this is not the answer either so our correct answer is transactional rights okay i hope you are liking the questions okay now let's move our next question which is question number six the question number six says about transcribing audio files is an example of dash analytics i already talked about descriptive predictive prescriptive and the fourth type of analytics which was diagnostic right so we already talked about these kind of diagnostic in the first question right so now you understand that descriptive is what's happening diagnostic is why happening predictive is what will happen and prescriptive is what action should we take now transcribing audio files what does that actually mean you need to understand this first transcribing audio files means that you are generating text right you input a audio file and you generate text for it that's actually what it means by transcribing audio files so then it has nothing to do with these three definitely not so the obvious choice which is left with us is cognitive analytics so let's move to our question number seven our question number seven is wait a minute you are already thinking that this question is repeated right <laughs> yes this is but i already told you in my opening slide throughout this series i will be repeating questions not only repeating i will be presenting them with slight variations right so because in the test in the actual microsoft test you will be getting similar questions which might have same answer however the way they are presented in the exam will be little different so you don't confuse that's why i'm giving the same questions in a repeated format or in some variations right so let's continue and move ahead with so let's continue and move ahead with the question number seven so a relational database is appropriate for scenarios that involve high volume of now you already i already told you that relational database are well suited for oltp right so oltp is online transaction processing that's why the correct answer is transactional rights now let's move quickly to our eighth question our eighth question is a visualization that shows 
a university's current student enrollment versus the maximum capacity is an example of is it cognitive descriptive predictive or prescriptive so now i already told you in the first question or the sixth question in the last slide that there are four forms of analytics first one is descriptive predictive prescriptive and diagnostics right now if you read the question very carefully you know that this is what we are talking about current student enrollment and i already told you that descriptive analytics tells you two things either it tells you what's happening now or it also tells you what has happened in the past so when we are talking about current student enrollment we are talking about something which is happening currently now thus the correct answer for this question is descriptive analytics let's see the question number nine our question number nine is again related to relational database so a relational database must be used when the options are a dynamic schema is required a data will be stored as a key value pair storing large images and videos strong consistencies guaranteed guarantees are required now if you talk about relational database there is no dynamic schema i already told you in the last slide the schema the table structures the relationship they are already preset pre-planned predetermined you are not going to change them frequently in relational database it's not suited for that uh, sort of transactions right so definitely this is not the right answer data will be stored in key value pairs definitely not this is something else we we normally use other type of databases like azure tables for these kind of uh, purposes then we have storing large images and videos definitely relational database is not suited for suited for this because if you want to store uh, large images or videos you use other options like azure blob storage right so this is not suited then we have storing strong consistency guarantees are required definitely this is the right answer because when we're talking about relational database the main crux or the main purpose of relational database is that we have a strong consistency of the transaction that are being done so either the transaction is fully committed or the transaction is rolled back that's that's actually the meaning of consistency of the transaction that's why this is the correct answer now let's move to the question number 10 Our question number 10 talks about Dash natively supports the analysis of relationship between the entities. We already talked about this, isn't it? I hope you remember this, that what natively... Oh. Okay, so now let's look at the option. The options are column family database document database graph databases or key value databases so what do you think the answer should be so guys when we're talking about relationship between the entities column family is not the right answer definitely not then we have document database no they are more suited to store the documents uh, like json documents or let's see do we have graph database well graph database are actually very good for storing relationship or showing the hierarchy between the entities so this looks to be the right option but let's see the last one key value store they are absolutely not related to uh, storing the relationship between the uh, entities thus the right option here is the graph databases now let's look at the question number 11 Question number 11 is related to relational data. So relational data uses what? Uses what to enforce relationship between different tables. So I already told you in our last slide that in case of relational databases, you have tables. In tables, you have columns. And on columns, you, you set primary keys or foreign keys. So the primary keys and the foreign keys help you create relationship between the tables. Thus, our correct answer is keys. So you use keys to enforce 
relationship between different tables. Now let's quickly move to our question number 12. The question number 12 says, creating closed caption text for audio files is an example of, is it cognitive, descriptive, predictive or prescriptive? If you remember in the last slide also, we had a similar question which said transcribing audio files. So both actually means the same thing. They both mean that you are generating text for audio files. So do not get confused by different variations of the same question. The answer remains the same. And yes, you guessed it right. It is cognitive analytics. Let's move to our question number 13th. Our question number 13th is a little different. In this question, we are given a JSON file and there are questions based on this JSON file. Let's look at the structure of the JSON file before we look at the questions. So our JSON file has details of a customer. It has its first name, its last name, address, then it gives its social media, then it also gives information about phone number. Now let's look at the questions which are based on this JSON file. The JSON file here and the questions are here in this segment. So the question says, what is a customer? Is a customer a nested array, a nested object or a root object? If you have already dealt or worked with a JSON file, you would already know what is a customer. But let me tell you and explain this JSON file and the structure of the JSON file a little bit more. So whenever you are dealing with the JSON file or you get a question based on a JSON file, always look what is the outermost node. In this JSON file, you can see the customer here. There is an opening and this closing bracket, the curly braces or curly bracket as you want to say it. And then everything else, all the other information is actually inside these two curly braces right so what does that mean that means that customer customer is a root object right and that's the answer for this first question so customer is a root object because everything else is lying under it so it's a root for everything right now let's move to our second question so what is an address and what is a social media okay so now before I tell you what is an address let me tell you what is a social media right so if you look at social media social media is all is is starting with this square bracket and here it is ending with the square bracket so whenever you see a node in a JSON file which starts with a square bracket and ends with a square bracket, you always know that this is a, this is a nested array, right? So an array in a JSON file is represented by these square brackets. So what, what is the address then? An address is definitely then is a nested object, right? So here you can see you can see the address here here sorry so here we have a uh, address so address doesn't have the square brackets so we already know that it's not a nested array it's also not the root array because it's inside one more node so it's not a root array as well so the obvious choice we are left with for address is a nested object and definitely then for the third part which is social media the answer is the nested a this concludes our first part of dp900 questions in the next part we will take more such interesting questions don't forget to like and subscribe and share your valuable comments until we meet again in our next video stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching In the first part, we looked upon questions that were of drag and drop style. 
in this part i will take you through questions which are yes and no or you can also say true and false so in the first part we covered question number 1 to 13 and in this part we will start with question number 14 so let's begin our first question is it has got three statements the first statement says normalization involves eliminating relationship between database table in case of normalization what we do is we build a lot of tables uh, in a relational database and amongst those table we set relationship so that we are able to secure or select the data from different tables so <clears throat> Uh, normalization is essentially building the relationship between the database tables which is quite the opposite of all this one so this statement is definitely no so normalization is not about eliminating relationship but it is more about building the relationship between the database tables let's check out the second statement the second statement says normalization normalizing a database reduces data redundancy <clears throat> Well, um, if you understand the concept of uh, normalization, uh, in normalization, we have various steps or stages. You can say we have first normal form, we have second normal form, third normal form, and so on and so forth. Normally, we put our data or keep our data in a practical scenario in third normal form. What is this normalization? So just to understand normalization process, we have, let's say I give you an example. You are building an application that store your daily sales transaction, right? So in this, what will you have? You, you will have information about the items you have sale, sold. You will have its uh, selling price, maybe your cost price. And you will probably also have <clears throat> the customer details who has bought this uh, item, right? Now, this will be a very big table with so many columns. On one side, you will have so many so on one side you will have so many information about items item name item description cost price selling price or whatever then <clears throat> you will also want to stay <clears throat> then you also would save customer details customer name customer id customer address phone number but then this is a very tedious and <clears throat> redundant data because with every transaction you are saving lot of customer detail which is unnecessary so in a normalization process what you will do is you will save only the transaction detail in one table and the associated customer let's say you will just put a customer id in the transaction table rest of the customer information will be taken to another table that will be something like customer master the customer master and this transaction table will be joined based on the customer ID. So you're not repeating the cust the entire information of customer. You are just storing customer ID with each transaction. So then with this understanding, now if you will read the statement, normalization, normalizing a database reduces data redundancy. Definitely it's a true statement. So we are reducing the redundant data while we are doing normalization. Then the third statement says normalization. Then the third statement says normalization improves data integrity. Yes, definitely. This is very soul of normalization process. This is done. Normalization is definitely done with an eye or with the objective to maintain the data integrity. So this is a true or a yes. Now let's move on to our question number 15. Our question number 15 also has three statements. So now let's look at the first statement. Batch processing can output data to a file store. So and then second statement is batch processing can output data to a relational database. And then batch processing can output data to a NoSQL database. So guys, we, also, we touched upon batch processing in our first part. So batch processing is basically when you process a lot of data in some chunks or batches. Uh, and if you look it from the context of Azure, then batch processing uh, is a process uh, which can output data to multiple uh, data stores or data 
data types or uh, data targets right um, and when i say that then uh, batch process batch processing can definitely output the data to a file store relational database and no sql so all these statements are es <clears throat> right so keep in mind when batch processing essentially can output data in so many formats and in to so many data targets uh, and that's the reason that this all these statements are true okay do not confuse batch processing with big data processing so you might see on many sites that some of these options might be given as a no which is wrong because they are confusing batch processing with big data processing so there is a different bit difference between batch processing and big data processing right let's move to our question number 16. our question number 16 is related to pass services pass services means platform as a service so let's look the first statement the first statement says pass data offerings in azure requires less setup and configuration effort than infrastructure as a surface or ias data offerings database offerings this is very true if you will understand the pass so what is pass pass is a platform as a service as the acronym says and the difference biggest difference between pass and ias is that in ias you actually start with building a virtual machine however and and on top of that virtual machine you put your database you configure everything you patch your database and just about every admin part that you would do in your normal data center the on-premise data center uh, that you would also do in ias or infrastructure as a service whereas in pass in pass you would just configure data so for example azure sql you will just say while configuring uh, on the azure platform you will just say okay i want azure sql database and the underneath infrastructure right and the maintenance of the underneath infrastructure you don't have to build any vm virtual machine you don't have to you know go about installing operating system supporting files configuration files you just do not have to do anything of that just select what do you want to use which type of database and then that's it few few questions here and there in the azure portal and then you're all set to use your database in a pass offering so definitely pass actually requires a lot less setup and configuration effort than ias so this statement is true or yes now let's move on to the second statement which says pass data offering in azure provide administrator with the ability to control and update operating version see uh, if you will go to azure portal and try to create or provision a pass database like a azure sql database then nowhere in the process you will be asked to give or select the operating system right so that everything related to operating system installation configuration that happens in the past so that is actually taken care by the cloud service provider so you don't have to worry about that and that's the beauty of pass actually so by this knowledge we can say that this statement is no right moving on all relational and non-relational platform as a service database offering in azure can be paused to reduce cost to understand this i will give you um, a context of ias normally in infrastructure as a service where you build a virtual machine you can actually go ahead and pause the virtual machine or stop the virtual machine and that reduces your cost because the moment you pause the machine or stop the machine virtual machine the cost is not happening now you're not incurring any cost now however in pass you just cannot you cannot pause all the services to reduce the cost 
right the important thing is that it says all relational and non relationals as a service so you cannot pause all of them right so this means that this statement is again a no let's move on to our question number 17 our question number 17 is again related to the pass okay so as i told you before as well pass data offerings um, okay so pass data offering in azure provides build in high availability of course as i mentioned before that all the baseline admin work relies or it is actually now uh, with the cloud provider so the the availability or the high availability is actually the core or already built in the pass offerings so you don't have to explicitly configure the high availability it's already there at least the base of it so this statement is a yes the second statement here says pass data offerings in azure provides configuring configurable scaling options so this is also yes because pass offering does provides you or enable you to configure the scaling option so you already have some con scalable options there but you can go ahead and configure to suit your need right so this statement is also a yes then moving on we have third statement which says pass data offering in azure reduce the administrative overhead for managing the hardware i think you can already now guess the answer of this because i've already told you that pass is essentially the core essence of pass is to reduce your uh, overhead of managing hardware configuring and all those stuff so this is also a yes let's move to our question number 18. question number 18 gives you a representation of a database design model so in the previous slides or the previous videos we have talked a lot about relational databases and questions related to relational databases and i told you how relational databases are designed how they are maintained in first or second or third normal form and how they are well suited for transactional models or like oltp application which is online transactional uh, processing however this question is little different and it's not related to oltp or relational databases so let's see the question so in this question uh, you are presented with one uh, schema uh, and the information that is contained in the schema you can see in the center of the schema there is sales so basically it's recording the transactions of or the sales transaction for some company or some application and you can see the other dimensions which are related to it so you can see the customer information is being recorded the product information salesperson who was there to execute the sale and then we also have the warehouse information so now let's see the question so the question asks you that what kind of data model it is okay is it a transactional model is it a star schema or is it a snowflake schema right and the second question asked is what is a customer so is a customer the customer table here you can see this it has a customer id and there is no foreign key so is it a fact is it a dimension or is it a bridge okay before actually asking or sorry before um, answering the question i will show you what are these star schema and then snowflake schema we have already seen the relational or the transaction model in the previous questions okay let me take you through first uh, the star schema and the snowflake so if you see carefully in the star schema we have a center uh, of that schema by center means the main thing that we want to record so in this case for example we have sales in the center of the schema and every other dimension is related to it right so you can say you can see we have sales and then we have the related 
bodies or the related parties which are also known as dimensions right so this is how a star schema is modeled so uh, and you see it it actually looks like a star so you have this uh, things and some you know spokes coming out in terms of this one like you can see fact here and then the spokes coming out uh, which actually looks like a, like a star so this is basically a star schema right and then what is the snowflake so a snowflake i would say is an extension of star schema so again you have a fact table fact is normally a table which holds transaction right so sales transaction so to say in this example and same for the star schema so sales transaction a transactional table normally right and then similar to the star schema we also have dimensions all related to the fact table all around the fact table however this the difference between star and snowflake is that in case of snowflake you have you know other dimensions also attach to this main dimension so you you can say you have sub dimensions as well so you have major dimension which are attached to the fact table and then you have sub dimensions which are attached to the uh, main dimension table so for example you have this time dimension now you can break the time in in terms of months or year or uh, decade or something something like that or time zones or maybe you know you can segment the time and that could be your sub dimension so i hope you got an idea about star schema and snowflake schema and now let's move back to our question our question asks what kind of model <clears throat> this is so we can see we have a fact table in the center and then we have dimensions all around we do not have any sub dimensions in this diagram so now i think you can already answer this question easily with that knowledge that this this model the data model here is is yes i think you already guessed it with me this is star schema okay now let's see what is the customer i already told you we have a fact in the center and dimensions on the outer part so thus the customer is a dimension here and that's the right answer okay i hope this question has given you some idea about star schema and snowflake schema go ahead and read about these schemas because these are major design models when it comes to design a data warehouse style uh, of a database or sometimes you also call them olap so uh, this is little different from oltp which are more transactional based and this is more suited for um, analysis or analytics so sort of a data warehouse now let's start with our question number 19 our question number 19 say a key value data store is optimized for you have to choose between enforcing cons constraints simple lookups table joins or transaction so key value pairs are nothing but their the the data is actually stored in terms of key and there is a value for each key so this uh, these are very simple data lookup tables um, and they are very optimized for simple lookup kind of thing just to sub before i actually uh, pinpoint the real answer i will give you uh, uh, So our first question is key value data store is optimized for and then you have to choose between enforcing constraint simple lookups table joins and transaction okay before i answer this question i will take you to a microsoft page where we we try to find out the correct answer for this question in this page i will provide the link anyways in the description box below so you don't have to worry about the link so coming on to this page just scroll down here and then you can see there is some information given about key value pair and you can already see how a key value pair uh, data store looks like you have some keys and you have some values for each key okay just coming if you will read through this uh, uh, context that is given for key value pair 
and you can easily see that uh, here it says that yes here so it says key value stores are highly optimized for application performing simple lookups right so this is a support uh, for our answer and this gives a clear uh, understanding and you don't have you are not confused between different answer that might be available on different websites so this is then a sure short answer that they are optimized for performing simple lookups thus our correct answer is simple lookups <coughs> okay moving on to our question number 20 our question number 20 says that relational data uses dash to enforce relationship between different keys different tables we have already talked about this uh, relational database in our previous slides and previous videos so relational database how do they maintain data they maintain data in terms of tables uh, there are a lot of tables so for example let's say you have a table about uh, an employee and there is a table about department so let's say uh, employee works in HR department so how do you maintain a relationship between both these tables so the relationship between the tables are actually maintained by keys it's not collection it's not columns or partition but it's keys so normally just to elaborate here we have a concept of foreign keys and primary keys so let's say in our previous example we would have a employee table uh, and in employee table we would store a department id uh, which would be a foreign key and this department id would be a primary key in the department table so this is how you you join different tables to fetch the desired information i hope this is clear to you now okay moving on to question number 21 now we have so in this question we have given some options on the light, uh, left hand side it says uh, index view and table and here are some blank boxes so what you actually need to do in these kind of question is you need to drag and drop the correct option in these blank boxes okay so in this is the way you would present it in the actual exam right but this because this is a slide so we are not able to achieve that uh, functionality okay but anyways you understand that so the options given are a database object that holds the data second option is a database object whose content is defined by a query third option is a database object that helps improve speed of data retrieval if you have ever worked with these kind of uh, with data you would already know the date the a database object that actually holds the data in fact i mentioned in uh, this uh, our question number 20 also so the data object that holds the data is actually a table so in a relational database all the data is is held in a table right there are a lot of tables that you can build and everything is stored in terms of table so it's more like if you have seen an excel file how it stores it stores the data in terms of rows and columns this is very similar to how you can you know visualize a table in a database so the first answer the answer for this one is table then a database object whose content is defined by a query right so let's say you have a table a big table uh, and then you have a customer who wants to see the data but you don't want to give him access to the entire data set and what do you do so normally what we do uh, we build views right on top of the tables and the views are defined by a customized query right so you just let's say you just want to show the employee name employee id and his department you don't want to show his address or phone number maybe it's uh, under gdpr so what will you do you will build a view on a on top of a table and then give access to the uh, client who wants to use it or who wants to see the data so view is a database object whose content is defined by a query so the correct answer is view and then we are actually left with the with just one index so of course index is the correct answer for the third one a database object that improves the speed of data retrieval however just to give the understanding i will tell you indexes are 
uh, let's say let's take the example of uh, sql so in sql we have uh, the very the famous type of indexes are like clustered index and non clustered index so what will an index do so let's say the analogy let's take the analogy of uh, a book so when you have a big fat book book and you want to you want to see or you find, want to find the information in a book what do you do normally you browse through or the you shuffle through the index and then you can find okay this information is in this page this is this is very close to what indexes do although there are there is a lot happening under the hoods but you can visualize the index uh, database index similar to this one so indexes are uh, a database object that facilitates faster retrieval of the data right i hope you understand that okay moving on we have question number 22 so question number 22 is 22 again is a drag and drop kind of question so you have given some options here and you have to drag them onto these data type boxes to match these options given here so let's read out so our answer area is given azure blob storage azure cosmos db kremlin api and then we are given azure table storage so now you have to tell which which is the best suited so what is best blob storage i mean what what are you gonna store in a blob storage are you gonna store image file are you gonna store a key value pair or relationship between employees so the correct answer see blob storage is blob is what blob is an object sort of if you already know the data types then blob is a is a data type which stores another objects right and thus if you look take that understanding and try to see the options now you will already see that image files are the best suited for blob not only image file you can store your video files you can store your audio files so pictures images so this this is uh, these are the object for which blob storage is the best right okay moving on we have uh, azure cosmos db uh, gremlin api uh, and what is this best suited for okay so either it's key value pair or relationship between employees so it is the correct answer is relationship between employees uh, but just to give you uh, uh prove the context prove the correctness of this answer i will take you again to the microsoft side uh, same page and if you just scroll down a little bit more uh, you can read about data document database but this is not what we are looking for we are looking for graph database so you can see here this is a graph database so what is a graph database graph database actually facilitate you to store relationship between the objects you can see this is an employee his department and then another employee department so this is what graph database is okay. coming back to our slide azure cosmos db trimalin api is one of the best known api which we use normally with these kind of graph database so this is our correct answer graph database which stores relationship between employees then the third obvious answer we are left with is azure key value pairs we already talked about this one uh, here in question number 19 so key value pairs are best suited uh, to be stored in azure table storage moving on we have question number 23 by default each azure sql database is protected by what is it a network security group is it a server level firewall is it a azure firewall or is it a azure front door so the answer to this question is azure firewall right okay then moving on with the question number 24 the massively parallel processing MPP engine of Azure Synapse Analytics. How does it do the massive parallel processing? That's the crux of that is what the question wants to ask you. Uh, does it distribute the processing across compute nodes or it distribute processing across control nodes or it redirects connection across uh, compute nodes or redirects client connection across control nodes? 
if you look at this question see last two options are not very relevant because uh, it's talking about redirecting the client connection so it has nothing to do with actually not related to this parallel uh, processing now the coming to the first two options we have either it dispute distributes processing across compute nodes or it distribute processing across control node see control nodes are more they control the processes so whenever something is coming for processing so control nodes are the nodes which which are deciding which compute nodes will actually process this so they are more of a controller right uh, so the correct answer for this uh, question is actually distributes processing across compute nodes and if you see actually compute is the keyword here you see so it's the compute nodes which actually compute right so you already know that uh, the processing is done actually on the compute node so this is our correct answer now let's look at our question number 25th it asks relational data uses dash to enforce relationship between different tables we have already discussed in our previous slides and i think you can already guess the answer the answer to this question is keys so we have foreign keys primary key concept with which we maintain relationship between different tables jumping on very quickly to our question number 26 we have creating closed caption for uh, closed caption for audio files is an example of dash analytics so you have to tell uh, what sort of analytics is creating closed caption text for audio files so we have already seen in our previous slides there can be few variations of this question that may come in the exam one is this of course that you can see on your screen the second one they can also put the question like transcribing audio files so that can be also uh, one of the variation of the question or they can also say creating text for audio files so both two three variations both are both can come in your exams so but the answer for the same is as we have discussed in our previous slide is cognitive analytics i will encourage you to see my previous videos uh, in this series like part one because in that i have uh, in detail explained why the answer for this is cognitive analytics and as i already mentioned at the start of this series we are repeating the question to enforce the understanding uh, in you so that you don't make mistakes with the variations of questions that are expected to come in microsoft dp 900 exam okay with that let's move to our question number 27 Question number 27 asks that you have to identify the object that is associated with the table that sorts and stores the data rows in the table based on their key values. So if you uh, see my previous videos, I have already hinted you that uh, there are two major type of indexes uh, when we talk about uh, database like SQL servers. Uh, the first one is cluster index the second one is non cluster cluster index is basically an index that actually stores the information or the data inside the table um, depending upon uh, the column on which that cluster index is created okay so that's why uh, uh, cluster index is that object which actually stores the data and sorts the data uh, the actual rows of data based on the columns on which it is created so other three options are not valid the correct answer is a cluster index jumping on to the question number 28 transparent data encryption encrypts what does it encrypt a column to protect data at rest and in transit queries and their results in order to protect data in transit the third option is the database to protect data at rest or the fourth option is the server to protect data at rest so if you read about uh, transparent uh, data encryption on microsoft side you would know that uh, it doesn't protect the data uh, it doesn't encrypt a column uh, to protect the data at rest uh, it is not also related to the queries and their results so the the third option is the database to protect database address yes so this option actually is very close to what uh, tde does uh, but let's look at the fourth option as well the fourth option says 
the server to protect data at rest so basically you see uh, tde is actually related to data at rest okay however it protects the database so it doesn't protect the server itself it protects the database thus the correct answer for this is the database to protect data at rest okay with this let's move on to our question number 29 our question number 29 is a drag and drag uh, drag and drop sort of question you have to drag or match these components with those with these statements so let's look at the first statement which is prevent access to an azure sql database from another network so let's see the options we have authentication we have firewall we have encryption now you uh, see uh, when you design a network right in order to protect a normal network what do you do you normally build a firewall on top of your network to protect the network from the from the outside network similarly when you create a database inside your network or vpn then you create a firewall to protect that from an outside network so the correct option for the first statement is firewall moving on to the second statement we have support azure active directory or azure ad sign ins to an azure sql database so in this case you would do what so what you are doing is essentially all the sign ins that are coming to your sql database you are validating those sign ins so this process of validating the sign ins to your azure sql database is called authentication okay so now let's move with the third statement ensure the sensitive data never appear as a plain text so of course this is encryption so encryption is actually associated with these kind of things where you don't want to show the real data you encrypt the data and then that encrypted data is used right so let's move on to our question number 30 our question number 30 is also a drag and drag drag and drop kind of question however it's an interesting question because in this you would see that you only have two options given here however here you have three statements given so this means that one of these options will be repeated or it comes two times let's see okay so the first statement says data for a product catalog will be loaded every 12 hours to a data warehouse so now if you see i already told and explained in my previous videos as well but just to give a very quick reference again so batch data is something that you process in a batch or big loads or big chunks that's batch data streaming or online or uh, on time processing is basically as in when the data comes you process the data so that's the basic difference between batch and uh, streaming data so now you see uh, when you read this it says that you will be data for a product catalog will be loaded every 12 hours so see you are collecting the data you are letting the data come in and then every 12 hours you're gonna process the data this definitely as i mentioned is an example of batch load okay now the third uh, the second statement says thousands of data sets per second this is very important see the keywords here okay so we are saying per second so as in when the data is coming that picture should already be creating in your mind when you are answering these kind of questions so uh, per second for online purchase will be loaded into a data warehouse real time do you see this word real time when real time is there you don't even need to think of any other option it's definitely uh, streaming so it's a streaming is the correct option here in microsoft exam they can give instead of streaming here they can also use the word on uh, real time processing or uh, on time processing right so you don't have to get confused with different terminologies just uh, build your concepts well so that you're never making mistake in these kind of uh, questions okay then the third statement says updates to inventory data to be loaded to a data warehouse every 1 million transaction it says every 1 million transaction so what are you essentially doing is you are processing 1 million transaction in a batch in a chunk 
and that's why the correct answer for this is batch processing with this we sum up our part 2 on dp900 real exam questions stay tuned to the channel for part 3 with more interesting questions coming up let's begin with our question number 31 our question number 31 gives you an options give you three options here which says visualization and you have three kind of visualization here given key influencer scatter or tree map and you have to match these three uh, visualization with these statements so let's check out the statements first a chart of colored nested rectangles that displays individual data points re represented by size and the color of relative rectangle the second one is a chart that displays major contribution of a selected result or a value the third one is a chart that shows relationship between two numerical values before i answer this question let us see what is meant by key influencer scatter or tree map visualization so here is the representation uh, to help you better what are these different visualizations so let's see what are the key influencers first so key influencer is a is a chart uh, or a representation where you have some sort of a results and you can also see the major contributors of the same so here you can see what are the major contribute contributors to the to the income uh, so this is what or how a key influencer chart looks like then coming to the tree map so tree map is a sort of a data representation where we use rectangle boxes and these rectangle boxes depending upon their size and color represent the individual data okay so this is a tree map then coming to the last one that we have this is uh, the scatter uh, sort of visualization scatter means that you have uh, a chart that actually shows relationship between two numerical values so it can be positive correlation it can be negative correlation or it can be negative so you can see positive goes up negative is coming down and no relation is basically going nowhere so it's uh, it's scattered all over so this is how a scattered uh, visualization looks like now let's try to answer our question so first one is a chart of colored nesting rectangles so i think you can already make out because it's a rectangle and i already mentioned you the answer for this one is tree map okay so you can see this is a tree map with a lot of rectangles and it's showing the uh, data for uh, some uh, study going on where you can see contribution of New Delhi, Calcutta, Mumbai and other states in India. Then moving on, we have the second one as a chart that displays major contributors of a selected result or values. So as I already told you, this where we see major con contributors is type of key influencer so the answer to this one is key influencer and the third one where we see relationship between two numerical values is scatter visualization i hope this is clear so always remember these charts whenever you are going to give the attempt for dp900 now let's move on with our next question question number 32 in this question we are discussing about different type of analytics we have already discussed these kind of questions in our earlier videos so i won't uh, take more time in describing it now okay but i will show you a little glimpse glimpse of how uh, what are these uh, different type of analytics we have descriptive that answers what's happening diagnostics why it is happening prescriptive what will happen basically the future uh, sorry predictive is basically what will happen and prescriptive is what action should we take okay so now that you know a little bit of uh, different type of analytics let's answer these questions so the first option is why did the sales increase in the last month so we can see it is asking why this is happening and i told you why is related to diagnostics thus the answer for the first one is diagnostic Moving on, we have how do I allocate my budget to buy different inventory items. Now, as we see in this one, 
uh, how is basically this is basically asking how I allocate so it's basically asking what action should I take and then the actions what actions are covered by prescriptive analysis thus the answer for this one is prescriptive then moving on we have which people are mentioned in a company's business document so now we are trying to answer what is happening right which people it's already happening we are just trying to find out the answer for which people are mentioned right so it's basically related to your past or what is happening so thus the answer for the same is descriptive analytics so please understand descriptive is uh, the analytics which answer what is happening or what has answered or what has happened in the past so if both any of these options come you have to choose descriptive analytics quickly move on to our next question question number 33 in this question you have been given a statement okay so it says that your company loads the data from a crm customer relationship management system to a data warehouse by using extract load and transform elt process right and then what you need to actually do is you have to tell where each step of ELT will happen, where will extract happen, where is, will load happen and where will transform happen. So you have to match these steps of ELT process with those of these locations, right? So let's try to uh, understand this first. So you say you are loading the data from where you are loading the data from a CRM. So this is your source then what where are you loading it to you are loading it to a data warehouse so i think two things are very clear here that source is crm and the destination is data warehouse then in between there is uh, another process which is called transform right so now let's under try to answer the question with this understanding so now where is the extract happening extract always happens in the source of the data so where is the source source is crm so the answer for this is crm then where is the load load is basically where the data is eventually going the destination and as, as i told you the destination for the same is data warehouse so the answer is data warehouse then obviously the, where is the transform happening right so in the elt process transformation is data is done like cleaning of data filtering applying some business logic all the transforming transformation is happening in in memory data integration tool so that's our answer i hope it has made uh, clear how we actually uh, go ahead and understood the statement and answer the question okay moving on with our question number 33 uh, sorry 34 and our 34th question ask us to match these components with these uh, statements so let's try to match off these ones so a represent it's basically related to the data factory uh, concept in azure so a representation of data structure uh, with within data stores so data factory in azure is something which is actually used for the elt or el processes so it extracts the data it can transform the data for you and it can and it can also load the data into some data source okay so in data factory you have to create data sets uh, which are actually representation of uh, data structures and then you also create pipeline pipeline is nothing but a group of activities that uh, this entire uh, data factory will do then we have linked service so linked services is something that actually link or connect to data sources so now let's try to answer the question so first one says a representation of data structure within data stores so as i told you a representation of data in a factory is actually taken care by data set so that's the correct answer for this one moving on we have the information used to connect uh, to external sources as i told you connection is something which is taken care by the linked service and that is exactly what our answer is then a logical grouping of activities that 
that performs a unit of work and can be scheduled so that's actually the pipeline itself right so pipeline is a set of activities that perform a lot of uh, work and you can put it as a as a unit so that's what a pipeline is before moving ahead i hope you're liking the question if so please don't forget to like and subscribe now let's jump to our question number 35 our question number 35 gives us some apis and we have to match how we can use these apis uh, in this answer area so let's look the three options given we have graph data we have json document we have key value data we have also touched upon some variation of similar question in our previous videos as well so graph data whenever you see graph data you always think of germline api in your mind right so this will help you so g is graph and g is germline right so maybe you can make a connect in your mind to remember this uh, answer easily so let's see the first answer is germline api then we have json documents so whenever we are talking about documents especially json document the best api to be used for that one is mongodb api so then the th second answer is mongodb api then we have key value pairs we have already checked this in our previous questions whenever we have key value pairs or key value data then the best api to use for is table api now when we move to our question number 36 you see another form of the same question here earlier we were given apis and we had to match them with type of data however in this variation we are given data types here and we are given uh, the apis here so we have to match the data types now with that of apis so let's see if we are in sync with our question number 35 as well so now we have a new kind of uh, data type which is azure blob storage so you can see azure blob storage is what it, it can store image files it can store videos or audios so thus blob is used for video audio images pictures these kind of storages thus the answer for the first one is image files then i told you azure cosmos germline api so uh, whenever this uh, germline api as we mentioned before so either it's a graph data or it's a sort of a relationship data so like a relationship between employees so these are the two sectors where uh, germline api is best used for so now the second the answer for the second question is relationship between employees okay moving on we have azure table storage and then as we also checked in here we were given table api here as well and the answer was key value data so let's see if that's the same for here as well so if we match azure table storage the correct answer would definitely be key value pairs so i hope you can see the variations in the questions so <clears throat> don't confuse in the exam with the variations i the the concepts are very important here okay okay moving on we will move to question number 37 so in question number 37 it asks that match the azure data lake storage generation 2 terms to appropriate level in the hierarchy to answer drag the appropriate term from the column on the left to its level on the right each term may be used once more than once or not at all so very important to see is that the question already tells you that these options can be used once more than once and in fact they might not be used at all so do not get confused in fact you already see that we are given three options here but there are only two boxes here so definitely one of the option is not being used so let's try to answer so we can see that eventually we are starting from an azure group right resource group and then we are going towards where we are going towards files right so let's see what are the intermediate steps so azure resource group is a 
top level so resource group is nothing it just groups your resources um, related to maybe you can say some project or maybe you can say all resources of a test environment production environment or things like that so it's just you can visualize it as a as a clustering unit as as something which groups the resources together okay inside a resource group normally what you will create so inside the resource group the first level of hierarchy under this resource group is azure storage account so before you create any kind or use any kind of storage like table storage or blob storage or any other other kind of storage you must have a azure storage account and thus that's what should fit in the first box given here moving on once you have created azure storage account the next thing you would need is a file share okay so that is exactly what will fit here a file share and then we have folders and files but you might be thinking why i have not chosen container okay so the reason being that in containers you cannot actually uh, create folders and files i mean there are some uh, ways to circumvent that but it's not a direct uh, out of the box functionality given so that's why i have chosen file share here because in file share you can normally it's like your uh, windows explorer you can go ahead and create folders and create files inside of that so thus the correct answer is file share moving on to our question number 38 question number 38 is asking us what is post postgres uh, sql on azure vm is it a uh, infrastructure as a service platform as a service or storage as a service so guys i've told you many times whenever you see a vm or a virtual machine you must already be thinking of infrastructure as a service okay and that's the correct answer here right vm infrastructure as a service so that's the link that should be already created in your mind now okay moving on we have azure database for postgres sql so what is it so now we are putting azure database on a postgres sql we don't have any uh, virtual machines here so the correct answer for this one is pass platform as a service okay i hope this distinction uh, between ias and pass is clear to you coming to our question number 39 our question number 39 asks that you need to create an azure storage account and the data in the account must replicate outside the azure region automatically now let's check out the options so the first option given is zone redundant storage the second option is read access geo redundant storage third option is locally redundant storage and the fourth option is geo redundant storage if you look at the question it says that the data must replicate outside azure region automatically thus you can easily rule out the option a because it is related to zone redundant and also option c because this one is also related to locally redundant storage thus our correct answers are option number b and d because they provide geo redundant so both these options are geo redundant which actually fulfills the need to replicate data outside azure region automatically i hope this clears uh, the logic behind choosing these options now let's jump to our question number 40. question number 40 says that you have a sql query that combines customer data and order data the query includes calculated columns and you need to create a database object that would allow users to run the same query now let's look at the option the first option is index index is definitely not the correct option because index is created in a database for a query optimization so definitely this is not the option view yes so view looks uh, a correct option to us but let's look at the other options as well scalar function function is definitely not the answer because function is majorly used in uh, databases to put some business logic or do some small calculation and return a value then table table is something which does not holds any query 
table is a db object that has its own data so thus our correct answer for this question is view so view is the db object that holds uh, data uh, based on a query uh, okay but i will also like to reinforce the fact uh, so the correct option here is a view so view is the db object that enables you to run a query over and over again and bring out the data then moving on to our question number 41 it says that what are the two characteristics of real time data processing and you have to choose actually two options right so uh, now let's look at the options given here it says that data is processed periodically low latency is expected high latency is expected and data is processed as it created so we also discussed about uh, about uh, this real time processing and the batch processing in our real uh, in our previous slides so go check out the previous videos as well but just to give you a very brief uh, context here in case of real time processing we are processing the data as and when it comes okay so we process in case of real time processing we process the data as and when it comes so now let's look at the option again it says data is processed periodically no that's a, that's a task uh, that's actually related to batch processing so this is not the correct answer the second one says low latency this one is a correct option because uh, whenever you are doing real time processing you always want that the processing time is very minimal so you want the data to be very quick of course high latency is not expected because <laughs> that's the opposite of the second one and then data is processed as it created definitely yes because this is real time processing so our correct answers are option number b and option number d moving on to our question number 42 is just ask what is an example of data manipulation language the answer is very easy in this case because we are manipulating data and manipulation out of these options is only done by the option c which is insert and that's our correct answer this was part three of our dk900 real exam question series hope you're liking the questions stay tuned for many more questions coming up in part four hello and welcome back to the tech blackboard Today we start part 4 of our DP900 real exam question series. If you wish to watch the earlier 3 parts, the link for the entire playlist is now available in the i button above and in the description box below. Until part 3, we have covered question number 42. Let's begin with question number 43. This says that you need to ensure that users use multi-factor authentication MFA when connecting to an Azure SQL database. Which type of authentication should you use? Now let's see the option. So the first option is service principle authentication. Service principle authentication has nothing to do with multi-factor authentication. Then moving on Azure Active Directory or Azure AD authentication. Now this looks a valid option to us but looking at the other two options SQL authentication which is more used to log in into the SQL database so this is also not a correct option then certificate authentication is also not used for the multi-factor authentication thus the correct answer is Azure Active Directory authentication okay now let's move to our question number 44 in this one it asks that you need to design and model a database by using a graphical tool that supports project oriented offline database development what should you use the options given here are microsoft sql server data tools or ssdt microsoft sql server management studio or ssms the third one is azure databricks or the fourth one azure data studio now remember the important words here or the important things to note here are graphical tool that supports 
project oriented offline database offline is very important here because this will help you to find out the answer as well so if you look at the options given here azure data studio azure databricks and ssms or microsoft sql server management studio all the three options b c d are online so they do not so they do not provide offline capabilities thus the correct answer for this one is ssdt moving on we have question number 45 in the question number 45 you have a transactional application that stores data in an azure sql managed instance what should you implement a read only when should you implement a read only database replica so in this one important things are that you have a managed sql data instance then you have to implement a read only database replica right so you have to tell that when should you do that should you do when you need to generate reports without affecting the transactional workload or when you need to audit transaction application or the c1 the c part is you need to implement high availability in the event of regional outage or the fourth option given is you need to improve recovery point objective looking at the option recovery point objective this this is definitely not related to implementing a read-only database replica this re rpo and rto are more related to the recovery of the database then when you need to implement high availability definitely not we are just talking about read-only replica right audit is also out of question because it has nothing to do with implementation of read-only then the obvious choice left with us is that you need to generate report without affecting transactional load so this is the correct answer moving on with our question number 46 it asks that you need to create an azure resource to store data in azure table storage which command should you run now looking at the options given here i can easily tell you the correct answer for this one is the option d which is az storage container create okay now let's move to our question number 47 in question number 47 you are given with the chart which is your company recently reported sales for the third quarter you have the chart below so you can see this is a chart it goes down and then it goes up and you can see this gray area here so this one is the actual figure or the present figure and this one is the future so let's see what the question asks which type of analysis is shown in the fourth quarter you can see this is the fourth quarter the earlier three quarters are marked by this bluish line and the fourth quarter is actually shown in this gray area so which kind of analysis is this is this a predictive prescriptive descriptive or diagnostic we have already discussed this many times in our previous videos that this is a predictive analysis because we are predicting it for the future we are predicting it for the next quarter fourth quarter we are already in third quarter and we are predicting it for the fourth quarter that's why this is a prediction so the correct answer is predictive analysis moving on with the question number 48 this says relational data is stored in is it stored in a file system as an unstructured data or is it stored as a hierarchical folder structure or a tabular format or a tabular form of rows and columns or comma separated value or csv now if you look at the relational table or the relational data tables you will see these tables are very close to uh, excel files so in excel also we store the data in rows and columns and in tables also we store the data in rows and columns so the correct answer for this would be tabular form of rows and columns moving on with our question number 49 
the question number 49 asks you that a block of code that runs in a database is called a stored procedure, a table, a view, or an index. Now, if you look at the index, index is a DB object that help you optimize or make a query faster. Okay, a view is something where you store a query and you can run or users can run this query again and again and produce the result. Then a table is something which actually stores the data. So the real data is contained in a table. A stored procedure on the other hand is a block of code and that can be executed in the database. So the correct answer for this question would be a stored procedure. Moving on with our question number 50. It says that your company needs to implement a relational database in Azure. The solution must minimize ongoing maintenance. Which Azure service should you use? Should you use Azure HD Insight, Azure SQL Database, Azure Cosmos DB, or SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machine? Now look at the options carefully. Starting with the option number D, Azure Server on Azure Virtual Machine. The important point in the question is that you should minimize ongoing maintenance. Thus, it cannot be Azure Virtual Machine because you have to do all the maintenance for the virtual machine not the Cosmos DB as well because this is a relational database, not the HD Insight as well. Thus, because I've already mentioned it's a relational database, now we are only left with one option and that is option number B, which says Azure SQL Database, which exactly is the right option for this question. Hope you liked the part four of DP900 series. Don't miss the part five with more interesting questions coming up. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. Let's begin our part 5 of our DP900 real exam question series. I strongly recommend you watching the earlier four parts. The link for the entire playlist is now available in the i button on the right corner and in the description box below. So let's begin. Let's begin part 5 with question number 51. The question asks what is the benefit of hosting a database? on an Azure SQL Managed Instance as compared to an Azure SQL Database. The important keywords here are Azure SQL Managed Instance. Considering this fact, if I look at the options very carefully, I can assure you the only closest answer for this question is the option B, which is native support for cross database queries and transactions. Moving on with the question number 52, the question asks that you have an e-commerce application that reads and writes data to an Azure SQL database. Which type of processing does this application uses? Does it use stream processing or batch processing, online analytical processing or online transaction processing? If you look at the question very carefully, it says e-commerce application. So what is an e-commerce application? It, it majorly either sells or buys or do something B2B or B2B, B2C style of transaction. So it's mostly a transactional uh, application. So thus, when we know that this is a transactional application, then the obvious choice that we are left with is OLTP or online transactional transaction processing. And that's our correct answer. Moving on with the question number 53, we have, you need to store data in Azure Blob storage for 10 years as per your company needs. The data is rarely accessed. Choose the storage tier best suited for this. Before answering to this question, I will take you to the Microsoft site. Now here in this site, you can see a description of hot tier, cold 
cool tf and archive tier is given so you can read through uh, this link i will give that in the description box as well uh, however let's look at this very quickly so hot tier has a higher storage cost okay so you have to consider the question might be asking you that you have to consider the cost the cost should be optimum or the cost should be minimum so in this case always remember that the cost for the hot tier is the highest moving on with the cool tier the cool tier is uh, optimized for storing data that is infrequently accessed or modified so you need to store the data for a minimum of 30 days in cool tier so remember this days limit uh, whenever you are given these kind of questions moving on with the archive so archive is the cheapest of all and it's basically used for the data which is rarely accessed okay and you need to store the data with a minimum days of 180 days with this understanding let's come to our question again if i try to answer this question and try to figure out what are the important keywords here i can see the first important word is 10 years so i need to store data which is huge and which is for 10 years i don't want to access the data very frequently it's very rarely accessed thus it's not a hot kind of uh, storage that i need it's not a cool storage definitely the answer is the archive storage moving on with our question number 54 this question gives says you that you need to query a table this question says you you need to query a table named products in azure sql database which three requirements must be met to query the table from internet okay so we need to uh, suggest three options that we must adhere to so that we can query the table on the internet let's look at the option the first option says you must be signed in as a reader role for the resource group uh, that contains the database so this option is majorly related to resource group however we need to figure out something which is closely associated with azure sql database you must have select access to the products table of course because we are accessing the table which is named as product this option looks to be true so let's hold on to this option moving on with the option number c you must have a user in database if you have ever worked with the database you know that this option is a must so you must be having a user in the database before you can do anything like you don't if you want to select something you want to insert update anything a user is a must let's look at the option number d you must be assigned contributor role for the resource group that contains database so basically we have reader roles contributor roles and these kind of roles are actually important to access resources inside the resource group so this is not actually related to the database itself thus let's look at the option number e your ip address must be allowed to connect to the database yes so if you will ever con uh, ever configure a database on azure and let's say you want to access the database using ssms or maybe you can also the in portal querying tool that microsoft offers within the azure portal in any of the in any of the options you must need to configure your ip address right as a trusted uh, source where from where you want to access the database thus i can say that the answer for this question r b c and e okay i hope uh, the justification for the answer is clear to you so now let's move to the question number 55 so this question asks you when can you use azure resource manager template or mostly known as arm template to automate the creation of an interdependent group of azure resource in a repeatable way to apply Azure policies for multi-tenant deployments or to provision Azure subscription. The last one is to control which services and features administrators and developers can deploy from the Azure portal. Now, before answering this question, let me take you to the Azure portal. 
On this link, you can read in a good detail about the ARM template. So if you scroll down here, you can see that it says that infrastructure code becomes part of your project, just like application code. You store the infrastructure code in resource repository and version it. Anyone on your team can run the code and deploy similar environments. Okay, so now you understand why ARM template is used. They are used for deployments. Okay, now what are the good features or benefits of the ARM template? Just scroll down the same page. Keep coming down. You can see why choose ARM template. Now in this section, you can see there is a point given repeated will results, which means that using ARM template, when you deploy some resources, the results are very repetitive. So the results are very expected. You can, you always deploy with ARM template and you always expect same results to come with your deployment. Thus, the answer to our question here is also repetitive, which is the option number A, to automate the creation of independent group of Azure resource in a repetitive way. Moving on, we have question number 56. In the question number 56, you are asked that you are deploying a software as a services SaaS application that requires relational database for online transaction processing or OLTP. Which are your service should you use to support the application? As we have discussed many times, whenever you see OLTP, right, then at that particular moment, only one option should click in your mind, which is Azure SQL database. So the correct answer for this question is Azure SQL database. See, Cosmos DB is not a OLTP database. HD Insight is more analytics and analysis. So this is also not OLTP. Then Synapse is more like a data warehouse. Earlier, actually, this uh, Azure Synapse uh, analytics was also known as Azure SQL data warehouse. So none of these like A, B or D actually is a OLTP. Only option that relates to OLTP is Azure SQL database. So make a connection in your mind. OLTP, Azure SQL database. I will show you another form of similar question uh, in the next question 57. In question number 57, uh, it asks that you have an e-commerce application that reads and writes data on an Azure SQL database. Which type of processing does application use? Is it a streaming processing, batch processing, online analytical processing or OLAP? or online transaction processing or OLTP, right? So now you see, uh, we again have SQL database. So can you guess the answer already? Yes, it is OLTP. So you see the connection here also it was OLTP. And then the correct answer was Azure SQL database. And in this case, we were given Azure SQL database and in the option we had OLTP. So I hope you can establish the connection in your mind when you give the examination. Let's move on to the question number 58. In the question number 58 is asked that what are the two benefits of platform as a service or pass relational database offering in Azure, such as Azure SQL database. And good point to note is that you also get some, you know, learning also from these kind of questions. So you can already know that Azure SQL database is a pass offering. So always keep that in mind while answering the question, because if you don't understand what service is what, if the Azure SQL database is a pass or a IES or a SAS, then you will never be able to give a correct answer. So please keep that in mind always when you are answering or attempting a question. Moving on. So let's look at the options. The options are access to the latest feature. The second one is complete control over backup and restore processes in database machine learning services. Or the fourth option is reduce administrative effort for managing the server infrastructure. So keep in mind, you have to tell two benefits. Always choose the right number of answers because each answer contains one point. Then for which service we have to tell the benefits? 
we have to tell the benefits for the past service such as azure sql database now if you look at the options again see past services are always maintained by the cloud provider so you don't have to maintain you use the you uh, use the past services right so the latest upgrades patches features these are mostly always done by the cloud provider so you don't have to uh, worry about those kind of uh, additional jobs okay so that is the that is one benefit of uh, past services so if you will look at now access to the latest feature yes of course it does looks like an answer and the second answer is reduce administrative effort for managing the server infrastructure as i already told that in case of pass you don't have to build any virtual machines or you don't have to build any server infrastructure so that is also a benefit of a pass offering <clears throat> okay so i hope this is uh, clear to you let's move to our question number 59 if this video has added any value in your learning a like and subscribe is highly appreciated if you have already done that Thank you. So let's see our question number 59. The question says, which Azure Data Factory component initiates the execution of a pipeline? Data Factory in Azure is a serverless integration service. It's fully managed and you can use it to build ELT or ETL. So now looking at the options, we have a control flow, a trigger, a parameter or an activity. So which one of them triggers the execution of a pipeline? The correct answer for this one is a trigger. Let me take you to the Azure website to prove this answer. So this one is an official web page of Azure Data Factory. You can see that Azure Data Factory is a fully managed serverless integration services and you can easily uh, build ETL or ELT processes without uh, any code. Okay, so you will find a lot of uh, benefits of Azure Data Factory here and you can read a lot how to set it up and how to do various things in Azure Data Factory. Then I will show you one more page. This page actually gives you information about pipeline executions and triggers in Azure Data Factory. If you will scroll down, you can see there are various ways of execution of a pipeline, one of which is manual execution. Scroll down a little, you will see we also have REST API execution, PowerShell, and then we also have trigger execution. If you read through, you will find that triggers are another way that you can use to execute a pipeline. And this is the proof of our answer. You can also find good information about triggers like how what are the various ways of trigger like uh, schedule trigger what are uh, tumbling window trigger what are event based trigger so you can find a lot of information about data factory and how they can be executed so it's a good page i will strongly recommend come here and read through the ex, uh, azure data factory okay so then we will move to our question number 60 our question number 60 is a yes no type of question it says that select yes if statement is true otherwise select no the statements given are azure sql database includes a fully managed backup service the second option is azure sql database has a built-in high availability and the third statement is azure sql database can use azure advanced threat protection or also known as atp the first uh, statement is true so azure uh, sql database does offer a fully managed backup service the second is also true because azure 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 sql database has a built-in of high availability so that is also true the third one is also true because azure sql database does have atp let me take you to azure websites to show all of these statements so that you are sure that these answers are valid so this is so this is the azure website where you can find more details on azure sql database what are azure sql database coming down here you can already see that azure sql database are fully managed okay and you can see the azure 
SQL database automates updates, establish and backup so that you can focus on software development. The keyword here is backup and this is exactly what our first statement was. So fully managed backup service. Thus, our answer is correct. Coming to the high availability, let me show you the answer here as well. You can see here in this part, the part I have selected, you can read through build in AI and build in high availability, maintain the highest performance and durability with a service agreement of up to 99.995%. So this proves that our second option, the statement is also true. Coming back, coming to the third option, third statement we have, does the Azure has this ATP? Let me take back to the Azure page. Same page, scroll down a little, keep scrolling and here you can find advanced data security. So here you can see that Azure also has advanced data security. Thus it proves that the third statement is also true. I hope you have understood and found the valid information related to these questions. I will provide all the links uh, that I refer to in this video in the description box so you can read them whenever you have ample time. This was our part 5 of our DP900 real exam question series. Today we learned about Azure Resource Manager or ARM templates, Data Factory, Pipeline. We also learned about Azure SQL Database, OLTP and PaaS offering. Hope you enjoyed the episode as much as I did. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. Today is our part 6 on our DP900 real exam question series. You don't want to miss the earlier 5 parts. The link for the entire playlist is now available in the i button on the top right corner and in the description box below. So let's start our part 6 with question number 61. <music> Question number 61, you are given a table, the table name is sales and then you are given some columns. The first is sales date, sales amount and product ID. So you are given with some dates, you are given with some amount and the product ID of each product. Now it says that you need to query the table to return average sales amount per day. The output must produce the following results. So what you essentially are doing is that you need to group the dates okay, and bring out the average sales on each day. So let me explain this further to you. So on the 6th April, you can see here, we have two days, two entries for 6th April. The first one has the amount $40 and the second one has the amount $200. Now, if you calculate average on uh, using a simple mathematical formula, you know that average is sum of the observations divided by number of observation. So what you need to essentially do is you need to add up both the amounts. So $200 plus $40 is $240. And number of observation is like we have two records for 6th April. So $240 divided by 2 is $120. So this is how the result is calculated. Okay, so now in the section below, the question is that how should you complete the query? To answer, drag the appropriate value to the correct target. Each value may, may be used once, more than once or not at all. Okay, so let's look at the uh, values that are given. So you see here, this is a answer area and it is a and this is a, you can say half baked query. So here they have given some part of it and you have to fill in this two, these two boxes, right? So these are your options. You can either use create, order by, group by or select. Okay, so let's see what they have given us. So we have something that will come here, then select sales date, average sales amount from sales, then something, and sales date. So if you look at the construct of the query, you would know that in first step we normally select. So we select sales date and because we have to calculate the average, 
we have this average average is a function that we use to uh, calculate the average of something and this is the column sales amount and then from sales of course this is the sales table and then what we need to do is because as i told you we are actually grouping the dates right so that's why here you will fill group by let's see the answer okay so as i mentioned that you have to put the select keyword first and then after that you have to group by based on sales date i hope you understood the concept so now, so let's, now start let's start with our question number 62 the question number 62 says when provisioning an azure cosmos db which feature provides redundancy within azure region so the question is asking you to provide the option which actually gives a redundancy under under azure region so please understand the hierarchy very clearly that the redundancy being asked is under azure region i'm repeating this again and again so that you are paying attention on this one before answering this question i will take you through azure site so if you will see the Azure site here, you can see there is a lot of information given on region and availability zones. Okay, here you can read that each region has a data center that's distributed within a response time defined parameter. Okay, and then coming to a little down here, we also have availability zones. So availability zones are physically separate location in each azure region so i hope the hierarchy is coming into your mind so we have region on top and inside region we have availability zones okay now let's go back to our question slide so in the question slide as i told you it's azure region on the top and inside the region we have availability zones so I hope the concept of the region and the zones are clear to you. Moving on with question number 63. This one asks that you need to gather real-time telemetry data from a mobile application. Which type of workload describes this scenario? So again, find out the keywords. The keyword here is real-time. Okay, Whenever we are talking about real-time, it is always related to streaming data right so uh, the other one which is closely related to the concept is batch data batch data is not real time batch data is we collect the data and we process the data whenever some condition is met right so this is a difference between batch and streaming data moving on with our question number 64 we have what is an Azure benefit of Azure Cosmos DB Table API as compared to Azure Table Storage? So the right answer for this one is that Azure Cosmos DB Table API actually supports multi-master model. So you can say that um, if you work with this Azure Table Storage and Azure Cosmos DB, you can say that Azure Cosmos DB is an enhanced version of Azure Table Storage itself. So there is a lot of limitation on Azure Table Storage. Uh, however, those limitations are taken uh, away in the Azure Cosmos DB. Uh, and of course, Azure Cosmos DB is costlier service than using Azure Table Storage, okay? Then let's see the question number 65. In this question, it says you need to store data by using Azure storage, Azure table storage. What should you create first? So uh, it's not related to only the table storage. We can use other storages as well. The question might ask you that you want to store data in Azure blob storage or table storage. So they can change the type of storage but you always remember that the first thing that you ever create to use any sort of storage is Azure storage account. So Azure storage account is the placeholder which stores 
which has which actually provides you different type of storage facilities in the Azure uh, cloud. Okay. Now let's look at the question number 66. Question number 66 is related to data warehouse. Okay, let's look at the question. It says that what is the primary purpose of data warehouse? Let's look at the option from the below. The option D is to provide storage for transactional line of business applications. Or option C, to provide read-only storage of relational and non-relational historical data. Or is it option B, to provide transformation services between source and target data stores. Or to provide answers to complex queries that rely on data from multiple sources. So if you look at the concept of data warehouse, you will understand that this might be properties of data warehouse. Uh, it, it does provide transformation or read only storage. However, B, C or D, none of these are the primary purpose of data warehouse. The primary purpose of a data warehouse is to collect data store data from different sources and provide you capabilities to query data to analyze data and take better business decision that's the primary purpose of data warehouse with this knowledge i can tell you the correct answer for this one is option a which is to provide answers to complex queries that rely on data from multiple sources Let's look at our question number 66. This one says that you manage an application that stores data in a shared folder on a Windows server. You need to move the shared folder to a Azure storage. Which type of Azure storage should you use? Is it queue, blob, file or table? The important keywords here that you should note is shared folder. Okay. So whenever you use shared folders, you're always left with one option in Azure storage and that one is file storage, right? Queue storage, queue is nothing but queue we normally use in messaging. Blob is more suitable for pictures or videos or audio files. Table is like key value pair if we talk about Azure table storage. However, blob is file is something that provides you uh, capabilities of uh, creating a folders to creating files in it and you know mapping it to the windows drive uh, using smb so the correct answer for this one is file coming to our question number 68 which says that you need to recommend a data store service that meets following requirements Requirements are native SQL API access, configurable indexes. What should you recommend? Should you recommend Azure Files, Blob Storage, Azure Table Storage, or Azure Cosmos DB? Now, if you see the options given here, Azure File does not has like capabilities of these uh, API access, neither Blob or Table. It's only Cosmos DB that give you native support for Azure API access and configurable indexes. So the correct answer is Azure Cosmos DB. Let's move to our question number 69. Our question number 69 is you have an application that runs on Windows and requires access to a map drive. Which Azure service should you use? Is it Azure Files? Azure Blob Storage, Azure Cosmos DB, or Azure Table Storage. If you have been paying attention, then you might notice that question number 69 is very close to question number 67, right? In this question, it asks that you have an application which requires access to a map drive. While describing 67, I told you that it's the file that provides you mapping capabilities. Thus, we can rule out the option Azure Blob Storage, Cosmos, or Table Storage. So the correct answer for this one is Azure Files. Let's move on to our question number 70. Now let's look at the closing question for our part 6. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी दिस आस्क दैट योर कंपनी नीड्स टू डिजाइन अ डेटाबेस दैट शोज हाउ चेंजेस इन नेटवर्क ट्रैफिक इन वन एरिया ऑफ अ नेटवर्क अफेक्ट नेटवर्क ट्रैफिक इन अदर एरिया ऑफ द नेटवर्क सो विच टाइप ऑफ डेटा स्टोर शुड यू यूज शुड यू यूज क्राफ की वैल्यू और डॉक्यूमेंट और कॉलमनर डेटा सो लुकिंग एट द क्वेश्चन द की पॉइंट्स टू नोट हेयर आर दैट यू आर ऑन अ सेम नेटवर्क हाउ एवर यू वॉन्ट टू नो दैट चेंजेस इन वन एरिया हाउ डज दे अफेक्ट चेंजेस इन एन अदर एरिया सो यू आर ट्राइंग टू एसेंशली इस्टेब्लिश रिलेशनशिप और डिपेंडेंसीज ऑफ डिफरेंट एरियाज सो वेन एवर दीज काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन आर कमिंग और लाइक रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन एम्प्लॉयज दीज काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन देन यू शुड ऑलवेज सिलेक्ट द ऑप्शन ग्राफ डेटा बेस बिकॉज दीज डेटा बेसिस आर वेल सूटेड टू फाइंड आउट रिलेशनशिप डिपेंडेंसी ऑन वेरियस एंटिटीज ओके सो आई होप दिस वॉज क्लियर टू यू I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed the part 6. In this part we discussed a lot of great concepts on Azure data and related services. We started to discuss with select and group clause on of Azure SQL query. We also discussed upon Azure regions and how Azure availability zones provide redundancy or availability. Then we discussed upon Azure batch and Azure real time processing or streaming processing. we also discussed upon azure files when to use them and what capabilities do they provide and then we discussed upon azure graph and how to use the azure graph services use cases for it and lot more if this video has added any value in your learning a like and subscribe is highly appreciated share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. This is our part 7 of our DP900 real exam question series. Have you missed to watch the earlier six parts? Then the link for the entire playlist is now flashing in the i button on the top right corner and in the description box below. Don't miss these parts as many of the concepts are discussed in detail. So let's begin. So let's begin our part 7 with question number 71. The question says your company is designing a database that will contain session data for a website. The data will include notification, personalization attributes and products that are added to a shopping cart which type of data store will provide low latency to retrieve the data keep in mind the keywords here are notification personalization attributes and product that are added to a shopping cart keeping these keywords in mind the answer for this question would be columnar database or columnar data so if i give you more information about columnar data so columnar data family is low latency data store type examples for these kind of uh, database are recommendations personalization sensor data telemetry messaging social media analytics web analytics activity monitoring weather and other time series data so if in the question you see any of these examples then you know the answer for that will be columnar data i hope that makes it clear to you just keep this uh, keywords in mind when answering these kind of questions moving on we have question number 72 the question number 72 ask you to complete the sentence so the uh, input given is batch workload and then you have to select out of these four options given the first option is process data in memory row by row or collect and process data at most once a day or process data as a new data is received in real time or collect data and process the data when a condition is met as we have discussed it in our previous videos as well 
Back work, batch workloads are the workloads which process the data in a chunk when a condition is met. Thus, the answer for the same is the last one, which is collect data and process the data when a condition is met. Now let's start with our question number 73. It asks three characteristics of an online transaction processing OLTP workload. We have discussed this many times that the OLTP is a normalized database which is heavy on write because it's a transactional based database and then it's schema on write why because you have already designed and decided the schema before you actually start using a oltp based database so the correct answers for this question are heavy writes and moderate reads schema on write and normalized data Giving you a context, if this question would have been asking about OLAP, which is Online Transaction Analytic Processing, then the answer would change. Then the answer would be denormalized data, heavy uh, or light writes and heavy reads and schema on read. So keep this in mind when you are asking, uh, answering the question. Keep that in mind. Is it a OLTP or is it a OLAP based question? Moving on to our question number 74. The question asks you which two activities can be performed entirely by using Microsoft Power BI service without relying on Power BI desktop. Now, um, looking at the option, the correct answer for this question are a report and a dashboard creation and the data acquisition and preparation so other two options actually require you to have power bi desktop however the option a and d can be performed by only using microsoft power bi let's move to our question number 75 our question number 75 is a yes and no so you are given some statements let's look at them one by one so first statement says Processing salary payment once a month is an example of a batch workload. So now that we have discussed this many times, I think you are already in a position to answer this. So batch workload, this is the key word here. When are we processing the data? We are processing the salary once a month. So we are processing a big chunk of a data. Thus, it definitely is a batch workload. So the answer is yes then we have second statement which says a wind turbine sends 50 sensor readings per second is an example of streaming workload is that true now let's see we are being thrown with 50 sensor reading per second so now you can only imagine that once you are receiving such a huge load of data per second then you have to process the data also as and when it is coming to you. Thus, it is an example of a streaming workload. So this statement is also true. Moving on to the third statement, a home electricity meter that sends reading once a day to an energy provider example is an example of a streaming workload. Now pay attention again that we are sending data once a day, right? So we have a lot of reading throughout the day. However, we only send it once per day. Thus, it is an example of a batch workload. It's not an example of streaming workload. Thus, this statement is a no. Let's move on to our question number 76. So now let's jump to our next question, question number 76. In this question, you are given some of the services on the left hand side like Cognitive, Data Catalog, Data Factory or Azure Synapse. And then here you are given a flow. Right? So pay very good attention here. So the flow starts with logs, structures, data and other data structures. What does that actually mean? So this is your data source. Okay, So you have a lot of different type of data here and you want to process this data the first step towards processing data is ingesting the data so you have to tell what should come here 
which should serve as ingestion of data. Moving on, we have store. So we store the data in Azure Data Lake. This is already given. Then we pre-process and model the data, right? So some service that help us in data warehousing. Then we have OLAP, which is online analytic processing, which is already given as Azure Analysis Services. And then finally, we have reporting flow. So finally, whatever data we have ingested, stored, and done analytics, and then we report the data using Power BI. So now so let's, now come, let's back come back to, to ingestion. ingestion. So we so ingest we... data, which means that either we are doing ETL or ELT process. We have discussed this in our data factory uh, video in which I told you that data factory, Azure data factory helps you do either ETL or ELT. Thus, the activity that should come here is Azure data factory. Okay, moving on. Now we have ingested the data, we have stored the data in our data lake storage, and then we have to pre-process and model the data. When we do, or when we talk about modeling of data, then you should also understand that modeling of data is associated with the data warehouse. Thus, something that relates to data warehouse should come here, and that is Azure Synapse Analytics. So now this fulfills our entire flow. I hope you understand the logic behind choosing Azure Data Factory here for the ingest activity and why we chose Azure Synapse Analytics for pre-process and model. Just to give you a more pro tip, because we have OLAP, which means online analytics, thus Azure Synapse Analytics is the best suited activity here. Moving on with our question number 77. In our question number 77, we are presented with some of the tools on the left hand side. And we have given some hints or you can say some statements reading which we have to match these tools to these statements. So now let's read one by one each statement. The first statement says, a graphical tool for managing SQL Server or Azure SQL database that supports access, configuration, management, and administration tasks. Now, the best suited tool for this is SSMS or Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. So, this is our first answer. Then, moving on to the second one, we have a lightweight source code editor with an MS SQL extension that supports connection to SQL Server and a rich editing experience for TSQL. The best tool for this one is Microsoft Visual Studio Code. It's a very famous tool. Both these tools I almost use on my daily life. Then moving on, we have a lightweight editor that can run on-demand SQL queries and view and save results as text, JSON, or Microsoft Excel file. So the tool which is related to this one is Microsoft Data Studio. Now let's move to our fourth statement. It says a development tool for building Azure SQL database, Microsoft SQL Server relationship database, SQL Server analysis services, SSES, data models, SQL Server Integration Services, SSIS Packages, and SQL Server Reporting Services, SSRS Reports. So the last option for this one is Microsoft SQL Server Data Tool or SSDT. Let's come to our question number 78. It talks about streaming workload and we have to tell the scenario about it. The first statement says sending transactions that are older than a month to an archive. This is not a streaming workload because we are sending data older than a month to an archive. So we are processing bulk data for a month. This definitely is a batch processing. The second statement says sending transaction daily from point of sale devices. Then in this case also we are sending data once in a day. Thus we are not doing streaming. We are doing batch processing. The third says sending telemetry data from edge devices. 
now whenever you see telemetry data or online data then you should make a connect that we are now talking about streaming workload so these keywords are important for you to keep in mind so this is an example of streaming data let's look at the last option which is sending cloud infrastructure metadata every 30 minutes here also we are doing batch processing because we are processing the data for every 30 minutes so the only correct answer in these statements are sending telemetry data from edge devices let's move on to question number 79 in question number 79 we are given a sentence and we have to complete it so the sentence says that you can query a graph database in azure cosmos db and the statements are as a json document by using sql like language as a partition row store by using cassandra query language as a partition row store by using language integrated query or as nodes and edges by using gremlin language so the correct answer for this uh, statement is as nodes and edges by using gremlin language let me take you to the microsoft azure side to prove this answer now here we are on the microsoft side you can see that we are presented with this beautiful diagram which shows us a graph database so in the graph database you can see these are called vertices right this this robin thomas football ben or android london these are vertices so vertices are like objects okay and then now if we see robin we see that robin uses mobile okay or robin knows thomas right so what are these these are called edges so edges are like relationship between vertices so keep that in mind whenever we are talking about the graph database if you come a little above in the on the same page then you will see a lot of uh, definitions of vertices and edges we were talking about these that edges are like relationship and vertices are like entities or objects scroll up a little more and then you can see we are talking about gremlin api and then little more and then you can see that we are now talking about azure cosmos db and gremlin api so those were the keywords cosmos db and gremlin api in our question also thus proving that this answer is correct now let's look at question number 80 which is the last question for our part 7 our question number 80 gives us some of the services on the left hand side and we have to match these services in these activities so you can see we have an activity that says extract transform and load and the last activity is data warehouse we have talked about these kind of questions in our question number 76 also we have seen these kind of question in question number 76 also so let's see what are the services that we can fit here starting with this we have sql server we have sap hana and then we have azure cosmos db what are we doing here we are doing etl process so we are extracting transform and loading the data and we have discussed this many times whenever etl or elt comes then you always think of azure data factory okay moving on we have data warehouse data warehouse is whenever explicit data warehouse word is given then you can very safely go for azure synapse analytics in fact previously it was also known as azure sql database so you so there is no confusion about this option here i hope you enjoyed part 7 in part 7 we discuss question around columnar data store where to use them and what are the keywords that you should look for in a question when using columnar data store as an answer we also discussed about batch workloads and streaming workloads what are the differences and which is to be used with what kind of statement then we looked at oltp and olap what are the differences 
and what are the characteristics of both of them. We also discussed about Azure Data Factory and Azure CNAPS. And then at the last, we also discussed Azure Cosmos DB and Graph DB. I hope you learned a lot of interesting questions in this episode. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.